Hey guys, this is Jekar with another battle report. As I had mentioned, I don't have game number two. Game number two, I left my camera in the car during the lunch break, so I ran out afterwards, and this is game three. Uh, the only thing you need to know about game two is that my opponent, Joshua, had terrible, terrible luck. He um, was playing Lizardman, and about turn four, he threw his salon into combat just because he was trying to break me with static res and... He, I think he forgot that Krimgor had magical attacks, I'm not really sure, um, because the slime was ethereal. Anyway, it was a bad matchup. I mean, it was a bad game for him, just stuff was exploding, all my war machines were direct hitting. It was a scary, scary thing. So, this is game three, also against Lizardman, against another great opponent. Uh, this guy's name is Lane, and he has a scary as mess list. He has 30-something um, Saurus, 20 six temple guard he has double slons he has a uh, a life slon and a shadow slon and he has teto echo which lets everybody vanguard he has two cowboys that are in a unit of cold ones i want to say he has eight cold one knights and then two cowboys um they're in the unit because he's scared of doom divers and he has two units of ripper dactyls which i was really excited to see i haven't seen anybody play ripper dactyls before um uh, he put he toted my two big units. My my list is the same as before. Um, I have Grim Wars Immortals, the Savages. So uh, from left to right on mine, you can see the just the corner of some Night Goblins there, a Wolf Chariot, a Mangler, some more Night Goblins. The Savage works with my BSB in the level four Wolf Riders level two behind the savages i'm getting kind of cheeky at this point because he's got a bunch of shooting with his skinks uh, but i don't think they can get there before i can you know do excuse me dodge into a building or dodge into a unit or something then i've got grimgore's immortals on the other side of them is um a wolf chariot and there's a pump wagon and a mangler over there as well um this scenario was you had to kill the three cheapest units that your opponent had they were worth 150 extra victory points each. If you kept yours alive, they were worth 150 extra victory points. So you may be asking yourself, where are your trolls? Well, my three trolls are my cheapest units. So I actually have them, I wish I had a picture of this. Um, I actually have them grouped together with some war machines off to the right of this picture. Now, the only reason that that's terrible is because Teto Echo is on the board. And I knew that he had Teto Echo, and I still thought, well, grouping my war machines and trolls all together sounds like a great idea. Because, you know, Comet's never going to kill all of my stuff, right? So, anyway, that's what happened. Um, this is before most of the vanguards. We actually both played the card that allowed us to vanguard, and we were both equally surprised by it. He thought I was going to sit back and bombard him. He said in his last game that he played against orcs, it was pretty much artillery decimation, so he wanted to vanguard and get up. And I was I was thinking, I don't want to face double slons, a Teto Echo, and another Skink Priest in there somewhere. So I want to vanguard up, uh, so I vanguarded my savages, which I have a picture of here in a little bit. Yeah, here's the picture of the savages that vanguarded up. I He vanguarded the ripper dactyls on the right first, and then I vanguarded the savages, pretty much blocking most of his other vanguards. He did vanguard a little bit more, you know, Teto Echo lets him vanguard, the ripper dactyls both vanguard. Uh, I Teto Echo roll a three on his D3, so he actually could vanguard both Ripper Dactyls, his core unit that he was allowed to, to by card, and uh, his three Teto Echo units. So he actually was vanguarding stuff just because, like he, he had stuff that he could vanguard and it didn't really even matter because I had blocked so much with these savages. And this is where we got into the discussion of why did we both vanguard? This seems weird. So my opponent gets the first turn and he moves up as you can see. If you see the little hearts on his skinks, that, those are units that are his cheapest. He has three identical skink units. And so um, he has two of those are um, his cheap units. And then he has a unit of chameleon skinks as well that he didn't deploy. He actually hid back in the, or he didn't deploy behind me or anything. He actually deployed back behind his lines to try and save those points, which I thought first was kind of weird but then I realized you know 150 points is probably more than they're gonna do especially when we're vanguarding everywhere and combat is pretty close so it may, it may not you know my artillery may not actually do anything so this is his first turn you can see some stuff pushed up mostly the ripper dactyls pushed up the skinks 
moved up to try and block my uh, savages. His skink priest is hanging off there of the rightmost skink unit. That's the guy that just has a dispel scroll because I mean, maybe he has a cube. I don't think either of the slons have the cube or the dispel scroll. So this is his guy with his magic defense. You know, not that it really, I think, matters. He's got like 17 channels a turn and a bunch of level fours. But anyway, so this is what he's doing. And I have like a, I think I need a nine to get into the source cab if I want to make that charge. Um, he's miasma, my savage orc. I believe it's movement. Um, his magic phase is just ridiculous. Um, he's switching spells between slons. He's casting whatever spells he wants. Actually, I should mention that his channeling was really bad for most of the game. Um, he, he has three from one slon, and then he has three other channels. The slon with three has the um, channeling rod, and that he routinely was channeling either one or no extra dice on casting or dispelling. It was really bad. I felt bad for him for it. So anyway, so he's, he's miasma my movement on the savages. He's kind of baiting me with the skinks, which are going to flee. And then he's giving me like a 9 or 10 inch charge onto the cold ones, which and we both think that I'm just going to wreck if I get into that combat. So I'm, I'm excited to give it a try. This is just an overview of the board. After uh, his turn, you can just see where all of his stuff moved up. His magic didn't do a whole lot. I actually burned my scroll on the first turn. I no longer have my little scroll token down by my Night Goblin. I was really hoping to get into combat and start beating up Slon. So I was like, I just have to go ahead and burn this. It was like a 10 to... It was like a 10 to 4 phase or something ridiculous. So I didn't have much choice. So on my turn one, I know this is a weird picture. You can see the pump wagon over here on the left, the mangler moving up. But what happened to the Saurus cap? Well... What had happened is I charged the skinks on the top and they're fleeing. Um, you can see the base of some Ripper Dactyls. I actually shot at them with uh, Doom Divers and stuff to get them. I was actually trying to kill them. I didn't want them to like redirect savages or add to the fight or something. Because I did make that 9 or 10 inch charge into the Saurus Cav. And I thought this is going to be excellent. You know, I have a billion D attacks. I'm wounding on threes. Um... I did not have Ear We Go Up, and uh, so I did, I had 50 something, I think I had 50 attacks on him, and I hit some average number of times, and then rolling to wound out of like 25, 26 attacks, I, hit, I wounded 9 times on a 3 up, and then he saved 6 of those 9, so he broke me on combat res, and... Because he killed, he killed probably five or six. I mean, I had two standards and a charge or whatever, but I didn't. I couldn't wog because Grimgore's unit didn't charge, and yeah. So he he just broke me, and I failed my steadfast eight with the reroll. And this is the first time I was kicking myself. I could have just lucky dayed and stood there, but yeah. So that really really sucked, and he ran down a boatload of points. So good on him. Uh, just got to roll better, I guess. Uh, you can see on his turn two, the Ripper Dactyl's charged in. Um, my troll is kind of looking that way, like, oh, well, maybe I'll fight him off. You know, my troll can maybe survive. If not, at least I can probably stall them for a couple turns so my rock lobbers can do something. At this point, you know, all of my artillery is firing. Was going to fire at the Cold One Knights, but since I was in combat, I was just, you know, firing at Chameleon Skinks and Ripper Dactyl's and stuff. Um, this is just showing what happened when he during his magic phase I want to say he didn't dwellers me I think he pitted me and got off you know eight or nine people I, I actually was just letting pit go I I couldn't let dwellers off and in honesty oh you can see his comet marker back there that's where my artillery train is that's why my trolls are all running away because they're worth points and um, you know I can't move my artillery so that's unfortunate Again, I set up and thought, oh, well, Comet will never happen ever, because of course I did. Um, anyway, yes, I'm letting Pit go off, and luckily it scattered, which is my experience with Pit, so I was grateful for that. Grimgore's unit doesn't actually need everybody in there to be effective, so I'm just kind of hoping I can get him into combat soon and start killing things before I run out of men. I believe that this is still his turn and that he triggered fanatics that killed the rest of his um, unit 
there. I think he actually landed on one and maybe or something anyway so it's just those are just the cold one characters um like i said I, I believe it's his turn and i believe that um he just ended on them and is planning on shooting the rest down with skinks which is a smart play i mean i didn't think i was going to kill however many six cold ones were left just with 2d6 you know armor strength 5 armor piercing but i guess sometimes you roll well this is my turn to the black orcs, the immortals, just keep moving up. Those rippers are not actually in the middle of the board. They actually kept catching on my shirt, so I moved them so that I didn't break his models because I absolutely hate breaking people's models. You can see his chameleons back in the very back, and you can see my pump wagons kind of circling around trying to get stuff. Um, the pump wagon in the upper left actually, I believe, has killed the unit of skinks with his priest that failed to rally. So points for me, that was a skink priest, a skink cohort, and one of his smallest units. And you can see my other um, pump wagon is bearing down on his chameleons, trying to get some points there, both their points and they're one of the smallest units. So this is my turn to some more. You can see that I sent the um, mangler through those guys. And actually, I did like one wound or something. I didn't do hardly anything with the mangler squig. Uh, oh, this must be, this must be actually, the dice says three, so this must actually be his three. And this was actually the turn that um, swayed the game, and I'm going to take a little break and talk about this turn for a minute. So he, did, as you can see, he didn't move very much, and what happened was he took his turn three, he moved his chameleons over to the pump wagon, he picked up dice and shot at them, and I picked the pump wagon up, or I, I started taking wound, I started taking armor saves. And so I put wounds on the pump wagon, and I said, Oh my God, we both forgot your movement phase and your magic phase. And he said, well, you know, can, can I take it back? And I thought about it for a while and I thought, you know, I, I really am a turn out from charging and I don't, I don't feel right going back a phase and a half and letting, you know, move out of the way of the manglers, move out of the way of the wolf chariots, um, you know, dweller stuff off, you know, that kind of thing. And I said, no, and I felt really bad about it. And I know that I know that that really changed the tenor of the game and I wanted to and he was tired and I knew that he was tired and I, I was tired and I didn't think about it either this wasn't a this legitimately wasn't a, a point when I went oh well if he just forgets I'm gonna screw him it was really I didn't even think about it until after I was putting wounds on the pump wagon and thought where did the magic phase go um, and so I felt really bad, and ultimately, I think that this was the wrong call. I should have let him have his phases back. Um, you know, it's yes, it was a big deal. You know, forgetting magic. You know, no, it's not necessarily my job to police his phases. But I mean, in, in retrospect, I, I look back and I'm like, wow, well, I, I, I would want somebody to give it back to me um, for you know just forgetting, uh, and so. I feel bad, and so Lane, I apologize. I hope I didn't ruin your event. Uh, I know that he won Best Lizardman, and so I hope I didn't screw up the rest of your weekend, bro. Uh, and anyway, so this this is what happened. You know, this is where he realizes, this is where his stuff is at when he realizes, oh well, I don't get a chance to move again. And this is my three, and the Mangler actually goes through the um, Saurus and kills them randomly. He like randomly moves through because remember he didn't do anything in my turn two, but in my turn three he went back through them and like just slaughtered them. And again, if if I would have let him take that move back, he wouldn't have left him there. And so it's just it's just ridiculous. There's the pump wagon killing some uh, fleeing skinks, some more, just doing what it do. And this is the immortals coming all the way up, just threatening being mean and gross and again they're just between pit and dwellers i mean they just probably wouldn't even have been they probably would have been half that size if i if he'd had that magic phase uh, but here they are just being threatening and evil so this is his turn four the rippers came back on the table on his turn three uh, we put them back on the table because even though he missed that part of the movement phase we were like well they have to come back on the table so we've got to put them back on so they charge the troll, which I thought was interesting. I actually really thought they were going to charge the war machine over the troll, but maybe they failed their frenzy test, which is one of the reasons people don't like them. Anyway, so they charge the troll there, and one of them has, I think that's one wound done to it, maybe one wound remaining. But anyway, there's the troll hanging out. 
and he charges on into the immortals because he realizes that I'm going to charge him, so he might as well get the extra bonus. That, I want to say that the center one, I believe, is his BSB slon. One is a BSB, one is the general. I want to say that's his battle standard bearer slon. I am not really worried about this combat at all, even though he's got a phase to um, buff himself because I would not allow him to miss any other phases after that one. I was like, no, you're going to take a magic phase. I don't care what happens. Um, this is actually my turn four. Uh, you can see what happened. He put Harmonic Convergence up on himself. He put he Miasma my weapon skill, luckily only by one. And he... Um, uh, actually, he may have big Miasma me. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't Miasma at all. He, he threw Curse of the Midnight Wind and Enfeebling Foe on me. And then he'd do harmonic convergence on himself. And I went double choppos because I would be before him, or at the same time maybe. And I just went to town, you know, hitting on threes with a reroll, wounding on threes, and he had like a six up armor save. Even I, even though I was rerolling sixes, which by the way was really hilarious on my hits to pick up everything that wasn't a four and a five and throw it again, I had probably two thirds of my dice, which is what it should be. But I mean, just picking up that many dice and throwing them again, I was. I thought it was really funny, um, and uh, I killed, I want to say I killed like 20 scar source or something, or excuse me, Temple Guard, and so then this is, on my turn, I charge a Chariot in, the flank, I killed the rest of the Temple Guard with, um, uh, I think just impact hits, and I put all but like one wound on the BSB slon. And so I was feeling really good. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to get some points. Yay. Um, this is his turn five. He turns around. Um, you can see the chameleons have taken care of one of the pump wagons. That's the one that caused the whole turn three shenanigans. And then he's he's come over here to put some wounds on my pump wagon. You know, try to recreate it. Again, not going to let him forget phases. Which is actually a really big deal. Because I really liked what he did in this phase. Which I don't think I have a picture of. But he cast, I want to say he cast like Miasma on me or something, which I let go because I don't really care. And uh, he used the uh, smoke and mirrors to put Teto Echo in instead of his BSB, which I thought was a really good idea. And I don't remember what else he did with his magic phase. I should mention that the comet that he threw earlier didn't hit any of the trolls. It did hit two war machines, but it only did one wound to a Doom Diver. So I, he killed a Rock Lobber out of it, or one Doom Diver out of two or something. So that Comet really didn't do anything, and now I'm going to kill Teto Echo and get some points there. Alright, so this is actually what happens. I kill him in my turn five, in his turn five, and then I move my Chariot up to redirect so that he has to hit Overrun because there's no skink characters because Lon can't control the, the source apparently. And I was going to hit him in the flank. And this actually, even more than the than the turn three snafu, this is actually what frustrates me the most about my play. He, I'd already screwed him a little bit. I'd already screwed him a lot, let's be fair, with the, the magic phase, not letting him go back. But this one was just me not playing in the spirit of Brawlers. I, I was thinking I'll give him the chariot points. I'll give him maybe Grimgore if he can kill him, maybe half the points for Grimgore's unit, which he should be able to get down. Um, and then I'll get the points for that, some points for the slon unit, maybe I'll kill a slon or something when I flank him. And really, I should have just charged in Grimgore's unit, declared a wog, and seen what happened, and, you know, just accept it. If I lost, I lost. It didn't matter to my points, but I was just trying to get greedy and thinking that he was going to be stupid, which obviously he wasn't. Um, we're, I mean, we're both, we're both being good players at this point. I just was playing normal Warhammer, not Brawler's Warhammer. And so I'm really, really sorry about that as well, Lane. I feel like he should have got more points. I know I said he got best Lizardman, but it probably sh he probably should have got another 700, 800 points off of this game just because of that. And I feel like maybe I cheated him out of that. Oh, well, let me be... I did cheat him out of that, and so I feel bad about it. So anyway, that was that game. I'm sure it was his most frustrating game of the tournament. But it was another win for me just because I got... We were pretty close in battle points, but I got the more more of the objectives. And so I ended up with, I don't know, game two I ended up with like 4,100. This game I want to say I ended up with like 3,200 or 3,000 or something. So not huge wins, but good sized wins. So it's keeping me up towards the top. I think I was like number 19 after this. 
So, like I said, another win to me. Just some concluding thoughts. Uh, first, obviously, don't forget phases. That's such a huge deal. Even if you're tired, I mean, I, I don't know. And like I said, the converse of that is don't be a dick about missed phases. I just spent I spent the rest of the weekend feeling like a tool for that, you know, one five-minute debate internally. It just wasn't worth it. Um, the second thing, Ripper Dactyls didn't really do a whole lot. I didn't have a picture of it, and I didn't mention it before. The Ripper Dactyls that charged that troll actually failed to wound it with all of those attacks. The troll did, like, two wounds back, and so he won by one. And, of course, their leadership four, even though they're cold-blooded, it didn't help. The troll ran him off the table. I mean, it was... It was silly. So those Ripperdactyls got a War Machine, and that was it. The other Ripperdactyls got beat up by War Machines and Fanatics. So, I mean, I I still like them in idea, in theory. I like them as a like force multiplier, combat help out, because I'm, I'm sometimes I feel like Saurus don't grind fast enough. But, yeah, as I, I feel like maybe he would have done better with in this game with pterodons just because they would have I don't know maybe been cheaper I, I could have dropped rocks on stuff I'm not really sure I, I didn't like them very much the magic phase scary as crap um, he had I think he had 11 levels of magic but he had a heaven's lore master so he had a, what's that seven spells plus eight spells plus two spells from the beast shaman I mean he was he was really he had whatever spells he wanted and that's something I noticed as we got, as I stayed up at the uh, higher tables. This was on like table 11, and then I spent the next, I spent the next game at table 10, and this game he had that much magic, and you'll see that my next opponent also had a lot of magic, and then my fifth round opponent also had a lot of magic. But I, it was just really weird to me, in our gaming group we don't, um, we don't use that much magic. We actually... Actually, one of the bromancers always gets on to me if I try to run a second level four because I won't have enough dice. And I, I can't explain to him that dice isn't the reason that you take a second level four. It's for diversity and redundancy and all the things that scared the pants off of me in this game. And uh, finally, Grimgor is just a beast. That unit, that weapon skill five with hatred, is just such, such a, I don't know... This is, I mean, last game, the game that I didn't record, obviously, you didn't see, but they took on another Scarvet horde to the front and just beat the pants off of it. Uh, they beat the pants off of everything, every, absolutely everything. So, I mean, man, I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that he took that horde on, even with all those debuffs, and uh, they did like 20 wounds in that first round of combat. That was just stellar. Um, also, it's not on my little list here, but I did learn that Lane is a great player, and I was really excited that you know that he saved himself the slon points. Uh, not that it helped him win, but it was a good move. It, it uh, he didn't need heavens as much as he needed that uh, shadow slon. So anyway, I had a, I thought that the game was very fun, barring a couple of my own screw ups. Um, I thought that he was a good opponent. Obviously, as I've said a couple times, he went on to become best lizardman, so he was no pushover. And I think that he, I think that he beat once bitten too. I'm not really sure, but anyway, uh, that's the report. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you, uh, if you found something you like, just hit subscribe or like. If you want to leave me a comment, just uh, make sure you do it in the comment section below. And you don't really have to uh, lambast me, like I said over that over the, so the questionable choices I made. I've been doing that for a while now. Peace.